The International Space Station is the most complex lab ever built. It was assembled in space, piece by piece, over the last 16 years. And you can thank what's called the Canada Arm 2 for that. It built the ISS while in orbit and grabs incoming spacecraft docking them to the station. There are no do-overs in space, meaning the Canada Arm 2 can't miss. So its robotics are some of the most precise and accurate technologies you can find. That same technology used on the space station was applied to a surgical robot here on Earth. A robot that wants to remove the word inoperable from our vocabulary. Outside an operating room at Foothills Hospital in Calgary, Canada, Dr. Garnett Sutherland preps his patient. But we've gone through everything, and you're going to have your operation on the right side. Yeah. And we're going to take out that aneurysm. Yes. And you're going to do really well. Yeah. It's going to be good. You know exactly what you're doing. We know what we're doing, just like you. Lee is 22 years old and has an aneurysm. Today, he's undergoing brain surgery to remove it. It begins routinely enough, shaving Lee's head where the incision will take place, drilling into the skull, and carefully making their way to the site of the aneurysm. But it's what's happening alongside the surgeons that makes this so unique. As Lee is being prepped, so is this machine. It's called the NeuroArm. It's a brain surgery robot inspired by the International Space Station. Dr. Sutherland and his team had the idea to bring an MRI machine into the operating room on a track. It cut down on the time required to move a patient to the room with the MRI in it. But the problem was even bringing the machine into the operating room still stopped down the surgery. To me that was a, a, a challenge because that disrupts the rhythm of surgeons. Surgeons get into a rhythm as they move through a procedure. So then that, from that, the idea was, well, we, ought to, we should build a robot that could access that space. So one evening, we wrote a letter on to, to McDonald Detwaller. You know, I remember saying in the letter, you know, you people make robots for very unusual environments. <laughs> McDonald Detweiler and Associates knows all about building robots for extreme environments. They've worked with NASA and the Canadian Space Agency since the 1970s. And they built the Canada Arm 2, the robotic arm on the International Space Station. The aerospace engineers decided to adapt that same technology for Dr. Sutherland's surgical robot. But building a robot that could function inside an MRI machine in the operating room was a new challenge, even for the space engineers. One of the absolute requirements was that wherever we control this robot, which is, we thought about outside the operating room, controlling the robot inside the operating room, that place has to recreate the sight, the sound, and the touch of surgery. We want this robot to feel. It took six years for the neuroarm to come to life. This is the second generation robot that Dr. Sutherland hopes will soon be in hospitals around North America and the world. So this is a descendant of Neuroarm, the original robot, and it has two arms, and the two arms are like surgeons. They multi-articulate, and they are quite precise at the tooltip, and this robot can perform microsurgery. Pull that off the five forward. The Neuroarm is built to increase safety and accuracy. No matter how good a surgeon is, the human hand has a natural tremor. The robot filters out the tremor for a perfectly steady tool. The precision needed for space was a good match for surgery. In the brain, every tiny millimeter counts. By reducing the risk, Dr. Sutherland and NeuroArm can operate on patients he otherwise might not have. Lee's operation is another success for the neuroarm. At the robot's workstation, Dr. Sutherland removes the aneurysm from Lee's brain. Believe it or not, it's over. Dr. Sutherland has performed all of the neuroarm surgeries here. Lee is the 58th case. Dr. Sutherland's first patient was Paige Nickerson. Growing up, I was normal. I had nothing wrong. You know, I was healthy. And then when I hit 21, I 
started to feel this big lump in my face and it was just growing and growing and growing. So I went for a CT scan and that's when it showed that I had just like tumors all over my brain and down my spine. And that's when I got diagnosed with neurofibromatosis too. Neurofibromatosis is a rare genetic disease that causes tumors to grow in or on the body. You might know it by another name, the elephant man's disease. In Paige's case, the tumors were growing inside, on her spinal cord, and in her brain. I had no idea what to think. No idea, because I had no idea what it meant until they said, you know, you could have multiple tumors all over your brain, which is scary, because automatically you think, oh God, I'm going to die. Dr. Sutherland and his team at Foothills thought differently. They saw an opportunity. Paige is a very special case because Paige has more than one tumor, and the tumor that we were going to take out from her was relatively complex. It was underneath her brain. They decided that particular tumor would be a good first test for the neuroarm. It had never been used in surgery before. I'm gonna put this in first. Neuroarm's first surgery was a successful one, and the start of a promising future for robotics in neurosurgery. So we think of image-guided robotic technology is a pathway towards more and more minimalistic procedures being done on people. They don't get large openings into their head. They get smaller and smaller openings. So that would be the best thing, right? Paige agrees that would be the best thing too, and not just for herself. Two years ago, genetic testing revealed that her son, Emmett, also has neurofibromatosis. I hope that he's able to have this kind of technology where you know he won't be in pain he will be able to get through it easier i feel like my surgeon saved my life and i know that with my son having nf2 as well i know they'll save his too when the aerospace engineers first built canada arm 2 for the space station they never dreamed it would help people like Paige rebuild their lives those unintended benefits continue to extend to our daily lives here on Earth. Okay, Just right. break off a piece. Including what you eat and how you exercise. We use all the different surfaces of the space station, so they're, they're in different configurations. 